1.2 million children will be sold into sexual slavery this year. 2,314 children are sexually molested per second for pay as products. Are you happy with a world where that is allowed to happen? Well, if you're yelling at your device right now, screaming, no, then you're going to love this next idea. We're going to show you how you can help bring this to an end. And all it's going to cost you is a few minutes of your time. No money, just your action. Let me take just a couple of minutes to show you how consent works today. And then you'll see how we can turn it into a new lifeline for your child if they are ever abducted. Let me beam up into our demo room. Love that. And let's uh, start with a bank and an information rights authorized agency, a nonprofit. It's, it's okay if you've never heard of that before. Privacy Co-op is one. There are others. The bank wants to get new customers, right? So they offer the best products and services they can. A customer opens an account and then starts spending money in many different ways. Now, banks have the ability to measure these spending habits and identify fraud and other trends. In this data age, banks can accomplish quite a few things with this data, some of which are prohibited by regulations, while others are allowed, some with the customer's consent and some without. This is a big part of how financial organizations make money today, by selling data where they can. In some cases, the customer may opt out of this. They can either go directly to the bank or go through authorized agents. Uh, when requested, the authorized agent may notify the bank that their customer has changed their mind about how the bank does all of these things. Banks like to work with authorized agents because it makes it easier when there's a, a single license in place to manage consent from a number of their customers. This is why banks and other businesses become affiliates of authorized agencies. It helps them comply with various privacy regulations around the world. You know, with this new relationship in place, the customer may wish to reverse their opt-out into an opt-in so that their secondary uses of data can be licensed by the bank. You know, this could result in dividends being shared with the customer through their authorized agent money in their pockets, right? So this is a normal, healthy information use relationship. You could think of this as a little consent molecule in the grand scheme of things. The customer will enjoy full control of their information rights and receive dividends while the bank may be able to find additional monetization of data with the customer's consent or create new services that will make the customer even more happy, such as customizations of regular purchases. As odd as it may sound with all the fear about data exploitation, there are many times when you actually want one business to sell your data to another. You know, for example, let's uh, try this. Let's say that there's a telephone company and they're also an affiliate to the authorized agency. They have customers as well. One of them is a parent and just like the customer above, this parent uses their telco device to make all kinds of transactions. Just like the bank above, the telco has the ability to detect fraud and other abuses. Now, let's say that you're this customer, and one day you go into a bank and request a loan. You're going to fill out all kinds of information with the loan officer. One thing you'll fill in is your cell phone number, right? The bank will use that cell phone number as one of the validations they do before giving you the loan. So they call your telephone company and ask your phone number is correct. The telephone company sells them the answer you know, for a dollar. In other words, they sell your data. This is an example of when you would actually want them to sell your data. So the bank collected your consent and then paid the telco. So let's then say that with an authorized agent in place representing you, to both companies, well, they agree to your terms and conditions for a change for these types of transactions, giving you more protections. It also means that they could cut you in for small dividends per each request. After all, it is your information and you own the rights to it. All right, so one such additional protection, well, authorized agents make the buyers of your information agree that they can't resell your data after they use it for their primary purpose. In other words, the bank can't buy it once from the telco and then resell it for the rest of your life. You know, that just wouldn't be fair. So, 
with the authorized agent in place and when both businesses are affiliates, you're in control of your information and you get dividends when businesses license its use. Got it. Okay. So now how is all of this going to save your child when they're abducted by sex traffickers? Well, remember the bank can detect fraud, particularly money laundering, and more specifically, money laundering from human trafficking. In this illustration, the bank has identified a criminal hub that's sending money to another hub. Now, the laws governing banks actually encourage examining data for fraud and sharing it with law enforcement. In some countries, it's considered a duty to share. This trafficking criminal hub here, like others, uses cell phones for communications. That means they are a business customer to the telco also. This hub and spoke pattern that you see here around the first criminal hub is very easy to detect for telcos, but there are a couple of problems. First, the laws governing telcos discourage sharing data with law enforcement. It's actually considered a duty not to share the data unless there's a court order or subpoena. So the cops have to know what to ask for specifically, and they don't with just the bank data. They can't go on a fishing expedition. And second, telcos don't want you, their customer, to know that they have this much data on you. So they're afraid to even bring it up. They have apps on your phone that record all kinds of info, and they have marketing people staying up late at night just dying to figure out a way around regulations so that they can monetize all that data. Hmm. So let's say that you bought your child a cell phone, that happens a lot, and a criminal working for that hub abducted your child and they're carrying their cell phone. With an authorized agent in place managing your consent, within a matter of moments, the telco could use a pattern match on all of the fraudulent businesses that the bank exposed to law enforcement and look for the hub and spoke pattern that matches. Even if the criminal smashed your child's phone and threw it away and then carried your child to another criminal working for an entirely different hub, with your consent in place, all of this data could be combined and potentially find your child, even after they'd been passed off. You know, let's just throw in one more complication into the story and say that this is happening in three different countries. Traditionally, each government would have to reach out to the other government to request data from private corporations, which is very time-consuming. Your child would be long gone before the results come back. But with this new technology using business-to-business -business private contracts through an authorized agent, and in some cases even government working with authorized agents as affiliates themselves, well, the data can come together in a matter of hours rather than months. Look, this is what every phone should have on it. And it's shameful that it doesn't yet. People on the inside of phone companies, good people, have been trying to get this out for over five years now. So why isn't this happening today? Well, remember the telcos have a couple of sticking points here. The duty to protect your data unless they have your consent and a concern about you learning how much data they actually have on you. Because of this, and I have first-hand knowledge, executives have had this idea shut down multiple times in recent years. You know, for the sake of argument, can we just take that last idea and put it to rest forever? Telcos have a boatload of data on you, okay? Let's just tell them to grow up and stop pretending they don't. They need to just get over it. This is about your child. We have told you through the entire show that we need your help. With a couple of phone calls and some emails, we can change things for everyone. I'm showing you the contact information for all the CEOs for the three major telcos in the US and the two major device manufacturers please contact them with the following three short messages. First, I know you have a ton of information on me, so stop worrying about me finding out. Second, I want you to work with authorized agents like the Privacy Co-op. And third, I want to be able to consent to my data being used quickly 
with banking information and law enforcement in emergency situations when I or my agent gives you my consent. Point them to this video. And here's my promise to you. I'll reach out to them over and over until they hear us. I just need them to hear from you also. Stop the video and do it right now. Here's their contact information one more time so that you can pause, write it down. We'll even include it in our comments below this video. Thank you.